All right. We've got a small nucleus of folks for our community call this month, but we thought we should still record something uh, so we can have an update. So again, I'm Rick Johnson and I have Jeff Spees and Ryan Mason and Cam Blanford on the call. Uh, so just wanted an update and, and keep moving forward with our updates here. Um, and there is one of the reasons we wanted to share this is we have made progress of having some sample things to uh, start as a baseline for working with ShareRed um, and Node-RED in general. Um, and then from there, uh, we're looking to start to pull together some more community activity and we're thinking about having a community sprint, possibly in the near future, uh, April, May timeframe. Uh, and we would love to have one or two more people be able to pull in who's able. Uh, so we're so likely to be putting out a call on uh, the Discord channel as well related to that, but we're really thinking about how we can start to prep something to then move on it. Because we do have uh, some good work to do still that uh, will really benefit from a couple more people being able to pull, pull them in. Um, so first thought would have Cam uh, give a quick overview of the share, share red node example repo that he created. Um, and that then the, the initial idea is that can be a baseline where anyone can fork that and do that to create a new custom node um, within, within node red, then have that kind of be a, a, a building block as we move forward here. So I'll, I'll relinquish control of the screen sharing here and let you take control, Cam. Sounds good. Okay, so this is the repo, uh, share red node example. And basically all this is, is a, uh, a template for making your own nodes. So what you do is you would fork this and then as the uh, documentation says, any place example dash node is written, uh, just replace it with whatever you want to call your node, make sure it has a dash in it. And then if you go into the example node JS file, you'll be able to see the actual uh, logic that's happening here. So uh, the node on input is kind of like where you really want to, or where, where everything's going to happen. Uh, and it, it's a relatively simple. I mean, this is just where you're going to take your input and then uh, pass your output to. And the, the comments kind of explain that. And that's basically it. I mean, you can just go through and say, you know, you wanted to make any sort of like, a, I don't know, even like an addition node. You could just pass two items into it, look at the uh, payload, and add those two items together and send it into the output. It's pretty simple. Uh, the other files are for uh, mostly formatting, like what the node actually looks like, uh, and for um, like sort of configuration of the node. For example, this is what the, the detail slash options uh, window for the node looks like uh, in HTML. This is just sort of what the, the tool tip is, the description. And you can add an icon for your node by putting it in here. And uh, there is a section where the fact that the node is in the share folder is described or in the share subcategory is described, but that's not, I think at this point that doesn't need to be changed. So really you're just updating any instance of example dash node to what you want your node to be and then adding the functionality in here and that'll rename the node for you and everything. Great, great. Any, any questions? So I think one of the things I that would be good to to mention. Um, so so yeah, I think you hit upon the main points that where someone would take it and then modify. Uh, I can probably show how I have gone started going through the exercise of forking 
this and take a look at this. It'll just take me a second to open up where those are since this is spontaneous. Um, come on, why aren't you doing that? Find it. Because there really are uh, only, so, okay, so this is, this will be, this will be good enough, I think. Let me take control here. Okay, so I was starting to create this node called Share Property Mapper, uh, which essentially it's fairly simplistic in the idea where you have an input property name and then an output property name. So thinking about how you might want to map one metadata field to another field uh, within a schema, and then you have an input object. And this is the part that I'm most experimenting with is how to have it be configurable uh, to be able to grab a particular part of the input object that's coming in. Uh, so if you're, we've probably talked about previous calls about there's come very common one is you working with the method.payload. Um, and that's the object that typically typically gets passed around. Uh, but there are other things that could be done where it could actually be hard coded to say, uh, this is actually an input value that is then going to this, or it could be pointing to a particular buffer, environment variable, uh, et cetera. Um, there's other things that you can do within the flow itself, like if you were to store a property uh, within within the memory, you can put it in this flow memory, global memory, et cetera. Okay, so enough about that. Uh, so in terms of creating this, uh, it's actually pretty simple. So in looking at that, I ended up just renaming a couple of the files. So there was the the HTML file, and let me actually it probably would be useful to pull up the GitHub example there so we can compare. So if we look at, let me just go straight there so I can find it faster. There it is. So share red node example. And so there was the example node HTML, example node.js. And those are really the two core ones. Uh, it's pretty simple of what I, so I renamed them to be, to map to then the actual node title. So share property mapper HTML, share property mapper JS. So then looking at those, let me open it up in the right. I personally like Emacs, so hopefully this will open up here. Oh, it was, this is what was hanging when I was trying to fumble before. So I will try, just go to TechSet instead. Go. There we go, did it finally come up? Oh, it is not coming up. Let's see here, there is stuff here. Okay. So I don't wanna start there, I think I wanna start with the HTML because it's easier to start from there and then talk about how that maps to various things. Let's try this again. There, okay. A little bit of creativity, you get to show up. All right, so the, the HTML file that's, as Cam said, this basically, this is the, the guts of it. Um, where this is where it's defining things like input properties that I've played around with, uh, and then defining how it actually shows up in that configuration screen that I showed. Um, and then the JS file is typically then what happens once you, once you have data itself, uh, looking at, let me get back to it, there it is. What it is actually gonna do. So you can see I'm, I've, this is not very clean, so take that with a grain of salt. I have a lot of things commented out, uh, uncommented, et cetera, as I've been playing around with this. 
Uh, but essentially, you have, and this, what this is doing, it's taking an input work uh, and then doing things with the message.payload. Um, it is taking an input property, output property, and this is all code that I had working and I have been commenting out as I experiment with various things. Then looking to see, to building some things where it's testing, say, is this input thing an array? Is it not? Output it, map it, and then actually push it out. So the, anything, essentially anything that you'd want to happen once the value is input, that's what you'd put there. So I think this is probably a good time to go back to the example that is in here and compare the two, I think, because that would be the most useful. So, so I'm looking at this one.js, as, as Cam said, it's pretty simple, where it's taking the node input and then just whatever it gets, it's pushing to lowercase. So, you saw, so I just showed a more complex example where it's actually looking to traverse an array and grab some values and then push it to a new object. Uh, and that is all um, in thinking about how we could have an input configuration of properties to an output property and have, uh, I think, yeah, I think it would be useful to pull up the, this is where I just, I actually just rebuilt my machine, had my machine rebuilt, so lots of things are, that were open before are not open anymore. But let me open those up. Yeah, Emacs is, actually the first time I've tried to use Emacs since I rebuilt it. So let me go back to here. So the example that I wanted to show is, actually I, can, I think I can just go to GitHub and do that. Maybe that is best since I've checked the code in. So if you look at the share red flows uh, in the harvest flows, this repo, there's uh, this mapping file. So this is what I'm working off of and building and looking at this node is thinking I may have this input property of kind of arbitrary nested level and then going to some other arbitrary nested level uh, and how we could just have as much as possible things coming in as a configuration file and then mapping the various things. So this is, this is the first step of that building block. Cam Ryan, did you have anything to like add clarification purposes or? No, I think you did a really good job of covering it uh, okay. from what I can tell. Okay. Um, points. Yeah, so, so, with it, so as you can see, this is in progress. Um, and we'll have an, a more polished version of this. So, so the goal is, I think, is part of this is I've been working just to have a, now that we have the, the repo that can be forked to create a new node, have the kind of an end-to-end -end example of how uh, that is done and document that is, is the next step for us. Um, but really going back to our list, let me find it in our agenda here. Um, you can see my many tabs open. There it is. So we have this initial set of nodes that we might want to have as kind of building blocks for building various flows. So parsing names, being able to branch uh, different flows. We could see potentially having like an OAI, OAI PMH process being kind of wrapped up into a few different nodes uh, so that that is not something that that's definitely not something that someone should have to recreate every time uh, since that's a pretty standard process. Uh, loading things into CSV, these are some things that we have in some example flows, but we could wrap those up again so that there, there's less coding that someone might have to do to use these. Uh, so I think that's the biggest update from kind of the share red node example. Uh, I can give a quick kind of institutional update from Notre Dame standpoint. Uh, we have also been uh, 
looking at how we can pull in how we can pull in data around centers and institutes on campus here then to be able to have some kind of general gauge of relative impact uh, so related to that we've been pulling in data uh, and we do have a dashboard similar to the one that was created for Trident Share uh, that is in progress. Uh, so that is something where we're really looking to share to potentially leverage. Um, and I think the other community share update uh, is, and this is this is more kind of an FYI of of, of things to look for in the future is. Uh, Cher has also been involved in the uh, Press QT grant that has been going on at, at Notre Dame among partners, including uh, San Diego, Purdue, Hub Zero, uh, National Data Service, NDS. Um, the, this is where I'm going to be getting myself into trouble not remembering all of the partner names. Uh, the, there's a repro zip. Uh, Quite a few others. Metadig is another tool that has has come up, but we're, we we potentially see uh, a place for the share uh, manipulation tools that have started to build within that project as well. Uh, so that's something just to kind of look for in the future. Is there anything else to add, um, Cam Ryan, Jeff, from your standpoint? I think it covers all of it well. Yeah, I think that's a good summary. Okay, and so so I guess kind of like looping back. So, so we would love to have a plan in place to start planning for a community sprint. And I think the the best way to go about it is to start uh, really doing that uh, grooming of the backlog to see what we could pull into a sprint uh, before we would actually execute that, pull some people in, so that then we could. Uh, be pretty organized when we actually do the real sprint in of itself. Um, so that is something that we will want to share uh, in the near future, and 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 we'll, we will do a call out uh, for folks that that may be able interested, depending on the time and if the and I think first those that are interested, and then do, looking to do a match uh, of availability of when we might uh, schedule that. But we do have some interesting things happening uh, from the standpoint of one, just we've just been talking about these flows to date or for this call in particular. Uh, but there's also portions around if we have different metadata harvesting flows that will be scheduled or running from time to time, there's work beginning around how we would manage jobs, any kind of cues around that, uh, how the data would be persisted, propagated uh, across different instances, really thinking about uh, Share's newer architecture as being more decentralized and being able to have a local instance of Share that may or may not be connected to a network of other instances where we're not thinking that it's required at this point. So I think there's, there's some really interesting work uh, that we have that we can queue up here. All right, if Jeff and Ryan and Cam don't have anything else, I think we'll probably maybe call it good for this update this month. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Yep, okay. I think that sounds great, Rick. All oh, right. where, where should, how should people contact you if they're, if they're interested? Yeah, so the, the best way so you, one, you can email me. Uh, so I, the rick.johnson at nd.edu, I'll just type that into the agenda here in the video so, so that is recorded for those purposes. And there is also this Discord chat channel. That is another way, but probably e just emailing me is probably the simplest thing to do. Uh, if folks are interested, but we will be doing a call out to those that have already been engaged in conversations to see if they're they're able to to join anything coming up. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Cool. So thank you all for those who will be watching in the future and we'll be updating soon. All right. Thanks. Take guys. care, guys.